Hi, welcome to NAMI Valley of the Sun's first Thoughtful Thursday presentation. Um, today's presentation is going to be Marissa Martinez. She is a junior at Arizona State University and an employee of NAMI Valley of the Sun. She's been working for us for the past four years. Her dedication to spreading the awareness about mental illness started when she was just 12 years old, and she hopes to continue it for the hundreds of students she will teach one day. So, Marissa, I'm going to turn it over to you. I just want to let everybody know that we're recording today's presentation. So, if you'd like to rewatch it, we'll post it in a few days. Um, hi, everyone. I'm super excited and grateful to be the first person to be able to give you guys information. Um, I know you guys have been waiting um, for this information or um, any presentation from us and I'm so excited that we're able to put these on weekly for you. Um, so like Julia said, I am a junior at ASU. I'm studying special and elementary education. Um, I started with the NAMI eight years ago. I was a volunteer for the NAMI walk um, and I, my, my, my mom thought I was becoming ungrateful, so she was like, We're, you're going to start volunteering. And I started volunteering, and then I fell in love with volunteering. Um, and here I am eight years later, still involved. Um, this year, I'm the volunteer coordinator for the walk. And um, like you said before, I'm an employee of NAMI Valley of the Sun. So I have some little artifacts. So here's NAMI Walks. Um, I got this award at the meeting and then also um i this is my um ambassadors when i was in high school i gathered a group of volunteers and they i was in charge of them for the day of the walk um down here is when i spoke to about 300 to 400 students um back to back in two years um, to a bunch of high school students that were working to um, get college credit as well at EVIT. Um, so I've definitely done a lot of presentations and this is definitely the first one that um, is virtual. So it's a new experience for me too. Um, and I'm still the same nervous person that I am even when I'm just talking on a phone to you guys, if it was just a room of people. Um, so my experience with NAMI, it's, it's been amazing. I've done other walks um, and there's nothing like a NAMI walk. The community for NAMI is just amazing. You can ask someone and it's not that they're gonna hide anything from you. They're gonna give you as much information as you need. And I've definitely turned into one of those people. Um, for me, my family members and friends, when there's something going on with them, they ask me, hey, do you know if any, um, if I can get any information or resources? And every time that I go to a health fair, I'm the person that has the bag full of things that, um, and resources that I can just give to other people. So for example, my godmother, um, she was dealing with things with her husband and she didn't know what to go to. She didn't want to keep reading Google. Um, and so I gave her some resources that we had at NAMI and um, she was able to um, read up on that and help her husband the best way that she could. Um, so yeah, that's a little about, a bit about me and about my involvement with NAMI. Um, and now I want to switch my role from being involved with NAMI to being an ASU student um, or just a student in general. Um, it's a huge adjustment. My first week um, dealing with COVID and all, all the changes, I had just had spring break. I had just went to Rocky Point and then I went to Texas and then I came back to NAMI and we, did, um, we decided to switch to virtual. And I was like, oh, okay, my school's now virtual, my work is virtual, and I'm really thankful that all of them are virtual. But now I'm at home all the time. And that was definitely different for me because I'm usually always busy. Um, I have a calendar, which I'll show you, that is color-coded. And this is color-coded to the one that's in my phone, as well as I have a weekly one that tells me what I'm supposed to do every week. Um, just because I am so busy and I'm 
and I would have to factor in travel time and do this and do that. And coming to virtual, it's definitely different because I, I couldn't just do that. Um, it was like, oh, well, I don't have to wake up an hour early to catch the light rail. I can wake up like 15 minutes before, brush my hair and be ready for class. Um, and so it was definitely different for me and especially because I would always see like my friends on the weekend or I would see other family members and now I didn't have the opportunity because we're not allowed to go to places and socialize with people. Um, and I've taken online classes before. So you would think that I could be used to this, but it's definitely different when all your classes are online. Um, at least I would have some interaction with um, some students that were in my class, but having completely online is di different. Like I felt after we switched over to virtual learning that I wasn't connecting with my professors because they couldn't see my face if I didn't have my video on. And as you guys know from Zoom, if you don't have the grid feature on, you don't see all the other people in there. So it's kind of a disconnect even though you're connected. Um, so I definitely felt overwhelmed and stressed that first week um, because I didn't have my structure, my routine that I was used to all this time. So I had to figure out something to make me successful. And that was writing down from what time I wanted to wake up to what time I wanted to sleep, what I was going to do. And so I was very ambitious and said that I was going to wake up at 8 a.m. every day <laughs> and I was going to eat breakfast and I was going to work out and I was going to um, maybe do some homework assignments before I started class at 9 a.m. And then my 9 a.m. class decided she didn't want to teach 9 a.m. her 9 a.m. class, so I didn't have that other structure. So she would um, give us a bunch of assignments and I and for me, when I didn't see 9 a.m. and I got all these, I had at least two or three assignments for her, I felt like, okay, well, I could have been in your class and learning this, but now I have these three assignments and I'm not required to go. So I had to figure out how am I going to balance putting this workload into it and making it seem like I was still in class to be successful. Um, and so what I did was I wrote down from 8 a.m. to I, I usually go to sleep at 12 a.m. or um, like 1 a.m. So I planned out my day um, by the hour or by the activity of how much it was going to take me. And I didn't end up following that schedule, but writing it down and having an idea that, okay, well, I'm going to do this. And if I stray away from the schedule, I can refer back to it. So, oh, I was supposed to be in class or I was supposed to be doing this. Let me get back to that. And that was definitely helpful, even though I wasn't strictly following it and checking it off every day. Just knowing I had that in the back of my mind was definitely a huge comfort for me. Um, let's see. Oh, I also, when I first started, when all of this first started, I spring cleaned my whole room. I took everything that I didn't want anymore, I didn't need, I clothes I never wore, um, just taking that out and kind of whenever I clean my anything, I feel like it declutters my mind too. So it's not that, oh, well, I have all this stuff around. Well, if I can declutter um, my surroundings, I can definitely um, declutter what's in my mind. Um, so I definitely was able to get rid of a bunch of things. My, you can tell when I'm stressed or um, really overwhelmed when you look at my room because if it's a mess, that means I'm stressed. I don't have time to clean it, and it it does bother me when I don't clean my room. So then once I do it, then I feel a lot better. Um, like these past two weeks, I've been having last minute assignments and finals, and I had a really messy room, but I was like, I need to focus on my assignments, but I also need to give myself that peace of mind that I am cleaning and I am being able to structure my life a little bit. So um, each day I would take 30 minutes and just clean a part of my room. Um, and in the end, it 
ended up all the way cleaned, but just being able to take little by little to build up to that big project. And that's a huge thing because even if you, you don't want to take a big leap, take tiny steps to get to that big goal. You don't have to go all in running to the um, finish line. You can take little jogs to it. Um, and it's definitely been different for me too, because yes, I'm, um, I'm connected on Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and texting and FaceTime and all these different technology things. But for me, I I feel so disconnected and I always thought to myself that I was an introvert that I didn't like um, being around a lot of people and even in my psychology class last semester they put me into the introvert type but now I I'm aching to just go out and be with my friends and um, even if it's just to like stare at cars driving by like I'd rather do that than be at home um, with I have my mom and sister, but having my friends um, with me is definitely um, different. So, and I've also learned a lot about myself. During this time, um, as students, we're all so stressed with, I got to get this assignment done. I have to do this. I need to do this. And especially if you're involved in um, college, like I used to be the president of the Teachers College Council and I felt so bad for the president now because she didn't get to do all the things that I got to do. Um, and I know that was a disappointment for her. So like, it's hard to figure out, okay, well now here I am trying to do, do my part in being involved, but now I have to do it in a virtual platform. And they have been doing really good and making sure that they're still involved. Um, but you have to learn these things about yourself. You have to learn that this situation wasn't planned. This situation just happened. And honestly, when you have feelings of being stressed and being lonely and being overwhelmed, you, you need to take a step back and um, embrace it. Because if you just push it to the side, it's just going to bottle up. Um, and you need to acknowledge them, especially because if you suppress them, it's just like, um, how do you describe it? Like, it's just going to explode one day and you don't want to explode. You need to get that feeling of, okay, well, what's going on? How can I manage my emotions, manage my feelings? And when I was getting those feelings of being very lonely or being very overwhelmed, I, I clean my room. I um, set the schedule, but I also did a lot of self-reflecting, which helped me learn a lot about myself. Um, and I also journaled my thoughts and feelings just to write them down and know that, hey, two weeks ago, I was feeling the same way. So what can I do differently this week to help myself not feel this way? Um, and it's definitely um, helped me with journaling and writing things down. Even if I just write that, I woke up and I did two assignments. That's a big accomplishment because two weeks ago, I probably didn't think that I was going to be able to do those accomplishments. Um, so another thing that I did um, to help myself adapt to virtual learning is I have glasses. Right now I'm wearing contacts, um, but these are my normal glasses. And I've noticed that my I started getting headaches a lot and I normally get um, like this pain by my eyebrow that goes to my eye and I realized that it was because I was staring at a screen a lot more you're switching from oh you got to take breaks of like going to a different class going here or going walking around an office versus you're on a screen most of the time so I started getting headaches and um, caffeine wasn't working, drinking a bunch of water, and I don't like um, taking a lot of Tylenol, so I decided that I needed to figure out something else, and I had heard about the blue light blockers, um, glasses, and I thought my glasses had that in them, but it turns out they don't, and so once I got them, I bought them off of Amazon, and they look they look similar to my actual glasses, but they actually um, block a lot of the light, and once I started wearing them, I would wear them at least two to three hours and just be able to give my eyes a rest. Um, I'd stop getting headaches. 
Um, so yeah, I definitely suggest these if you need, um, if you start noticing that you're having headaches a lot and you're doing all the minimum things to get rid of a headache and it's still not working, it's probably because you're staring at a screen all the time. So, yeah, and then here, here's proof of it. There's, they give you this little card and then um, when you flash the light on it, this is direct blue light, which comes out of your screen and you can see that the purple here is that light and it's basically like sun burning your eye um so that's why i got it um just to help myself so with that and um being being a student now i'm going to turn it over to parents i am studying special and elementary education so i kind of have a little experience i don't have kids but um, I do have a little sister and I do have a goddaughter who is nine and she, her school actually hasn't given her anything during this entire time that they've been out of school. Um, last week was their first week of going on to Google Classroom and doing something and they also got their first packet of doing something, but it's not required from them. So she, she's been without all this time learning anything and um, it's definitely been hard because her school also, um, she's in third grade, so she's learning fourth grade stuff. So she just keeps going um, like above her grade level already. So now it's kind of pushed her back because now she's not learning all those concepts. And next year, it um, classes are still gonna happen. So for my parents out there, I just want you to know that you guys are so important and you guys are so, you're superheroes right now you're dealing with work if um you're dealing with work having to provide for your family and then you're also trying to help your student and help your child that you may see a lot more um or they're always at home now and you had that time to be able to clean up around the house when they were at work but now when they were at school and now you don't have that opportunity because they're always home um, I definitely would encourage your students right now. They're going through the same things of not knowing what's going on. They don't get to see their friends. They don't, they don't get to see their teacher every day. Um, and especially for like high school seniors and, um, eighth graders, they're, they were, well, eighth graders were supposed to promote and they're supposed to have all these opportunities to, um, have a promotion and have a dance and, um, do end of the year things with their friends because now their friends that they've gone through um, elementary school and middle school with they're going to go to different high schools um, and my sister is she's in eighth grade and I think about all the things that I got to do as an eighth grader um, these last couple months and what she's not going to be able to experience so definitely talk to them ask them how they're feeling and what's going on um, because it's diff difficult, especially the seniors. Um, they're going to, they're missing out on prom, they're missing on their last time with their friends before they go off to college or they go off and start living their lives. Um, so it's definitely pressure for them to have to realize that all of these things are changing and they don't have control over it. Um, and if your child isn't the same, um, just ask them or tell them like, I noticed that there's something different with you or there's a change in your personality. And I just wanted to know, um, do you wanna talk about it? Um, if not, it's okay, but I just, I noticed it in you. Um, when you tell them that you noticed them um, and you notice their feelings and you're gonna acknowledge it, it's definitely gonna help them because now here they had all this stress um, compacting onto them and now, someone's seeing that and so maybe they can alleviate some of those stressors that they were having um and see if there's anything that you can do to help them um i had seen online that some parents would like help them pick up their room a little bit not cleaning it completely but picking up little things just let them know that hey like i am here for you and i know you're going through things and i just want to help you um is definitely uh huge help in helping these students um okay so 
if you're trying to teach them and you're trying to come up with lesson plans every day, I know from experience, especially these last um, couple of weeks, that lesson plans are more than any person thinks. It's a it takes me a while to complete a lesson plan, even though I've been studying how to become a teacher. I've heard other um, senior year teachers, they tell me, oh, well, this took this lesson plan took me four hours. Um, just know that you can have a full schedule um, and have science, math, reading, language arts, writing all day and have it structured out. But when you're the parent and you're teaching them, it's a huge difference because one their environment's different they're not at school they're at home so when they're at home they're not going to want to learn because they're at home that's not the place that they usually learn at um and for you to be their teacher you're not the teacher that they've had all year and um your their friends aren't around they're not sitting at their desk they're not um looking at the classroom walls that have maybe their favorite quote or maybe some work that they've done on there. So just know that it's okay to be overwhelmed if they're not, if you don't get through every section of the day, that's fine. Um, there's gonna be other days and just know that you are their parents still. So when you're trying to tell them, well, why aren't you listening to like how I'm trying to teach you? It might be in their mind that you're still my mom. Like I don't, I don't want to learn from you. And it's not that you're a bad teacher or anything like that. It's just there's roles in a child's mind. And when you kind of intertwine them, it's hard for a student, especially in a case where they were in school all year and now here they are not, um, not learning in their normal environment. So ASU actually has a program called the Sun Devil Learning Lab, and they are open Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 2, and they have a set schedule. So what they do is um, go on YouTube Live and talk about the, they do different topics, different lessons every day based on their, um, their grade level, um, except high school. The high school, they don't have it yet, but um, K through 8 or pre-K through 8, they have, um, teachers that are there, um, faculty members, and also um, student teachers. This is how um, the student teachers were able to get their requirements that they needed this year because the school shut down that they didn't get that experience and they needed it to um, complete their degree. So what they did was come up with this. So there are seventh, seventh and eighth term students. So they were student teaching. Um, and teaching these lessons. They have breaks in between, so it's not from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. They're completely um, doing, they're completely doing this, 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 and this. They have brain breaks. Um, I heard today from my clinical teacher that during one of the brain breaks, they were teaching the kids like how to change a light bulb. So it's not that they're, they're not specifically learning and they're learning some new tasks and skills. So that was definitely interesting to know. Um, and I will put the link in the chat when we go to um, the questions, and I can actually show it to you after. Um, so, and then there's also a good website that I like to use um, when I'm creating lesson plans because they have a lot of free resources. And even it's not about teaching resources. There's like right now to like coloring pages for thinking the um, frontline workers just so that um, there's different activities for them to do. And if you don't want to teach them, well, here's some activities that keep them occupied and that they're able to make a difference still. Um, it's called Twinkle, um, like Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star, but without the E. Um, and they have free resources there, and they also have ones that um, you have to pay for. But a lot of Twinkle's what, um, resources are free, and they also have an area where you can create um your own stuff your own resources and things like that so if you didn't want to draw out something and you want it to look more computerized with the template um you can definitely do that on this website and especially on their facebook page they always share different education resources that are amazing i've um a lot of places and museums right now 
um, are giving out virtual field trips. So one of the assignments that I had just completed was doing a virtual field trip to Ellis Island. Um, and then the students would write journal entries and they had to do it based off events and things that were in Ellis Island that they had to write into their um, into their journal entries. So a lot of places like that, since they know that students can't go here, they're not getting um, the education that they need, they're, a, they're opening their doors virtually to um, the students, which is really amazing. Um, and there's like, I think the NASA um, space station, they opened up something for virtual tours and different interactive things. Um, it's just so amazing um, and I would definitely follow them even if you if, if you don't have students at home they have so many interesting and cool ideas um, they also post um, very relatable teacher things so if you have been a teacher or thinking of becoming a teacher you can definitely um, relate to these people who are um, making these resources available um, and the last thing I want you parents to know is that you're doing an amazing job um, and you're like I said you're juggling everything and just be honest with how you're feeling too your your feelings matter even if you're stressed out let your children know just so that they know hey let me see if I can do anything to help mom or dad or grandma or grandpa just so that you're able to tell them hey um, I'm feeling a little stressed out with having to teach right now can we take a break and most likely they want to take a break too um, so this is all new territory for all of us but we're gonna make it through together um, it's exciting where we're seeing technology help people and what they're doing um, so yeah I'm I'm so happy to be the first person to um, do thoughtful Thursday I hope you guys got some great information from it um, and I'll actually show you the websites. I pulled them up for you um, just to discuss it a little bit more. I have it on my phone. Okay. So this is the Twinkle website that I talked about. They have um, a bunch of uh, all different grades, um, different languages, and based off um, different standards over here. And again like these are free resources that they can use um, and Twinkle had just recently gave out um, um, that you could download all these resources for free if you wanted and there's so many different things that you can do um, this is to create a flip book and um, make what you want with it this is social studies so there's so many different things that you can access in this um, website so it goes all the way to eighth grade special education and things like that. And then here's the Sound Devil Learning Labs. Right now there's not gonna be anything on here if I click it um, because they're not in session. So like I said, pre-K through eighth, I'm not sure if they've started this. When I clicked it before, I said that they weren't um, ready for that, but they could be because it's been about three weeks now. Um, so if you click, like say we're doing 7th and 8th grade, um, here's their daily schedule. So um, for this grade level, they only go till 1 p.m., but it tells you what, for how long they're going to be doing each subject and um, the break that they have in between so they can plan out for their day. And all you have to do is click launch lesson on YouTube and it will transition you to YouTube and um, when a video is playing and when they're in session it'll be right here and it automatically plays um, and you get to watch the teacher teach and um, they they kind of review from what you learned the last time but they don't um, they don't go over it into detail so you might have a little bit of um, learning in between there, a learning gap, but you should be able to get up to speed with everything that they're teaching.
And then here's the Twinkle Facebook page. Um, it says we help those who teach, but also like any family member can go on here um, and look through it. Like these are for teachers and for moms. Um, they have they have so many resources on here and they highlight different resources that could be useful during this time. Um, but yeah. Marissa, this is, do you have a, um, do you, are you able to hear me? I have a question. Okay. I'm unable to hear you right now. Yeah. Um, I think it's coming. Let me try one more time. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yes. I think I was covering my mic. Sorry. Uh, that's okay. So um, thank you so much. That was amazing. And I'm sure um, there are so many tips for parents and, and students and everybody. So thank you so much. My question is I've also struggled, struggled with structure. I think it, I was not prepared for such a lack of structure. And um, did you have a certain particular um, calendar that you that you utilize? Is it something that you just kind of created on your own? Or what, what did you find to be the best use of a calendar for you? Yeah, great question. So um, for me, I already knew based off my calendar on my Google calendar, um, what I was going to be doing every day. So um, like Mondays and Wednesdays, I would have a class from 10 30 to 12 and then i would work from nami from 12 to 7 30. um in between that i would put a little gap time for me and i would just be able to go and do different things um i for what i did was um i just got a piece of paper i worked this um right here i just wrote down a schedule and i put 8 a.m to 9 a.m this is what i'm doing 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., this is what I'm doing. Um, and when I had classes, I would do the same for Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, just so I had a structure that worked for me. Thank you. Does, does anybody have any, I don't know, suggestions or ideas for someone in your household who who is uh, really struggling and needs to find more structure or interest or something. I mean, I know that's, it seems like impossible, you know, but are, are, what kinds of things can we do? I don't find too much trouble motivating myself because uh, <laughs> Nami takes care of that, all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but what about other people, you know? I mean, I think you're, the things you're doing and have done are really, really great for you, but not everybody's like you. So <laughs> what would be some other things that maybe would help others struggling at this time? I mean. Well, I wonder about music. Mm -hmm. If music could be used as a motivator, depending on what the, what the goal was. You want yeah. them to be motivated to do what? And I would say reading books, too. Um, for me, I haven't been able to read a book that wasn't um, academic or um, was required by me. So I read a whole book in a whole in two days because I I hadn't read in so long. And it felt so good to get back to being able to read. Right, right. I, I love reading and I don't get to do it as much as I used to do it. But uh, that that is something that is a good I'm going to call it an, a good escape, let's say, you know. <laughs> one of yeah, the things Pinterest. I would add, oh. Lenore, is um, just one of the things I will throw my two cents in that I kind of forced myself to do was I forced myself to pick something that I have never done before. And I needed to mix it up somehow because the routine was becoming so routine. And so for me, it was um, either making a food that I'd never made before, um, you know, taking a walk where I've never been before, taking a drive where I've never driven before, just something different. Yeah. You know, that, that's kind of funny. And I'll share this. It's, we're just this small group. We all know each other. Um, I, I just accidentally happened on to in Netflix this um, – it, what it is is it's a it's a novella, so it's a it's a Mexican um, soap opera. Okay, well it happened to be it's, 
<laughs> Don't <Sorry>. laugh, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, anyway, sorry. I I have had this uh, all you know many many decades goal in my life to become bilingual. My husband is bilingual, and I know I listen to a lot of Spanish, and I know I can hear and understand a lot, and I have a lot of catchphrases. But anyway, I just happened by accident onto this, and believe me, if you want to see some great stuff, it's called El Dragon. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, I started watching this, and it was totally accidental, but it's just what you were saying, Leticia. I wasn't looking to have this happen, but I found that I became so um, so caught up in the story, even though it's okay, you know, it's not, <laughs> not five star, but who cares? I got caught up in the story, and the next thing I knew, after a couple of weeks, I was going around the house and I was talking to my husband in Spanish. Not not totally and completely, but I was using all these phrases and I'm like, is that what I think it is? And he says, Yeah, it really is, girl. Uh so <laughs> it, it's been it's been really kind of a fun distraction and sort of empowering because I've always heard people say, lots of, of the Hispanic people that I know say that they learned English by watching television with subtitles so they'd hear the English over and over and over and they would learn it so yeah well anyway that's been one of the things that has kind of captivated me so <laughs> uh, that's how my daughter in college how they would learn Spanish is sitting in front of the TV watching those, those soap operas yeah yeah uh -huh. it works it, it works. does it does I think also, too, there's an app called Duolingo, um, and it's a great resource in, um, if you want to learn a different language, and it will remind it you. Called? What's it called? Duolingo, um, D-U-O-L-I-N-G-O, and it has like a green owl, and it's a really great um, app to learn, and it'll remind you if you, if you stop um, doing the lessons, it'll say, oh, well, you haven't did the, you haven't um, practiced in five days. Do you still want to learn Spanish or do you still want to learn this? And so it will keep reminding you so you don't forget. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's great. You've given some good resources today. Yes. Yeah. You know, you know, I, I really, really, um, as a retired secondary education uh, teacher, I really applaud you, Marissa, for the praise that you gave throughout this to parents and the reassurance because um, we read and we know that many of them are very frustrated. I mean, you know, when my kids, if this had happened to me decades ago and I was supposed to be teaching them math, you know, forget about it. Uh, but just the, the reassurance and knowing that, you know, they don't, they don't have to be the best. They, they need to do their best but that whatever they do is okay. And um, I, I thought that your your tips and your reassurance were very, really very good. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, great job, Marissa. Thank you. Well, very good, Marissa. I'm clapping. <laughs> thank you. Was there any other questions that we had? No, ASU, you're going to post it, ASU Learning Lab, right? Mm -hmm. And I think Julia put it into the chat. Oh, um, okay. That's the link for it.